Hi, this is Pratima from Planet Physiology. Today we shall learn about color vision. This topic is dealt under the following headings: definition, theories of color vision, processing of color signals, factors affecting color vision, and significance of color vision. In second part, we shall study clinical aspects, that is, abnormalities of color vision. and test for color vision color vision is defined as the ability to discriminate the colors based on their wavelengths out of vast electromagnetic spectrum human eye can see a narrow band of light in the range of 380 nanometers to 750 nanometers that is from violet to red color wavelengths less than 380 nanometers are called as ultraviolet rays and more than 750 nanometers are known as infrared rays both these are not visible to human eye before going to details of color vision let us understand some basics of it color has three characteristics first is u u is nothing but the appearance of the color or the actual color it gives name to the color next is the intensity intensity of color is nothing but degree of purity of color or brightness of the color it tells how much white or black is mixed in the particular color as you can note when the black is mixed color is becoming darker and when the white is mixed color is becoming lighter the third character is saturation it is nothing but the amount of gray in a particular color as you can see from this shades our brain first processes the u in the color blobs and then the other parameters of the color so basically first it detects which color we are seeing and then the other parameters also in various abnormalities of color vision one or more of these characteristics are altered Now let us understand the concept of primary colors. These are the colors which cannot be created from other colors. When primary colors are mixed in proper concentration, they produce white color. And combination of primary colors in different concentrations can produce any spectral or non-spectral colors. Now those who are artistic in nature or painters will think that primary colors are blue yellow and red but please remember here we are talking about light so we are talking about wavelengths so with respect to wavelengths primary colors are blue green and red now another concept is complementary color complementary colors are the pair of colors when mixed together produce white color Now with this basic knowledge let us begin with the theories of color vision most of these theories are based on the cones because color vision is function of cones first theory is young helmont's theory which is also known as tricolor theory or trichromatic theory this is the most accepted theory as it can explain perception of various spectral as well as non spectral colors and also the basis for various color vision abnormalities it was put forth by thomas young in 1801 and later was modified by von helmont and hence it is known as young helmont theory according to this theory human retina has three types of cones each is maximally sensitive to one of the primary colors it is now shown that These cones contain three different types of photopigments. Blue photopigment is called as synolab and it responds maximally at 440 nanometers. Green photopigment is called as chlorolab and it is maximally sensitive at 535 nanometers. Red photopigment is erythrolab and it maximally responds at 565 nanometers. This graph represents the spectrum of these three types of cones. On x-axis is wavelength and y-axis is light absorption in terms of percentage of maximum absorption. 
so blue cones we have seen it's maximally sensitive at 440 nanometers but it can respond to wavelengths ranging from 380 to 525 nanometers blue cones are also called as s type of cones as they respond to shorter wavelength green cones respond maximally to 535 and their spectrum ranges from 450 to 620 nanometers they are called as m type of cones because they respond to middle range of wavelengths red cones are maximally sensitive to 565 nanometers and they are called as l type of cones because they are responding to the long wavelengths they respond to wavelengths between 470 to 750 nanometers Now let us come back to our young helmont theory this theory states that a particular color perceived is interpreted as per the ratio of stimulation of red green and blue cones respectively what does it mean let us understand with some examples so here is our previous graph now when a particular monochromatic light is thrown or shown to the eye and if the 99% of the signals are transmitted by red cones and 42% of the signals by green cones and 0% that is none by blue cones this ratio is 99 is to 42 is to 0 this ratio is interpreted by our visual cortex as orange color light similarly when 83% signals are transmitted by red as well as green cones and none by blue cones the ratio becomes 83 is to 83 is to 0 and this is perceived by the cortex as yellow color the ratio of 31 is to 67 is to 36 is perceived as green color whereas the ratio 0 is to 0 is to 97 is interpreted as blue color so it is the amount of signal transmitted by red green and blue cones respectively to the visual cortex decides the color we perceive hence we can perceive hundreds of different shades of color by different combination of the ratio of the stimulation of these three cones now how white color is perceived equal stimulation of red green and blue cones gives sensation of white color whereas absence of light is perceived as black color so please remember perception of black color is positive mechanism it requires intact retina as well as visual pathway now coming to the second theory of color vision it is put forth by herring and hence it is known as herring's theory it is also called as opponent color theory according to this theory retina contains three photochemical substances and the color perception depends on the breakdown and resynthesis of these pigments for example breakdown of photochemical white black gives sensation of white whereas resynthesis of this photopigment gives sensation of black similarly yellow color is perceived when photochemical yellow blue is broken down and its resynthesis gives blue color the third photochemical is red green whose breakdown gives red color and resynthesis gives green color this theory cannot explain perception of various shades of colors and also the color vision abnormalities and hence was not accepted next is polychromatic theory according to this theory there are seven types of receptors in the retina which are arranged in three groups color perception depends on intensity of the light and the visual angle that stimulates specific group of receptors This theory also was not accepted and hence we will not go in details of this theory. The last theory was put forth by Granit. According to Granit's theory, there are two types of ganglion cells, dominators and modulators. Modulators are of three types and they are responsible for color vision. So according to Granit, color perception is function of ganglion cells and not the cones. 
this theory also was not accepted so here we finish with the theories of color vision now let us have a quick look at the processing of the color signals colors are detected by cones and the signals are sent to the x type of ganglion cells from the cones these ganglion cells are also called as midgate cells now ganglion cells transmit the signals to parvocellular layer of lateral geniculate body that is to layer number 3 to 6 from here geniculocalcarine tract carries signals to layer 4a and 4c beta of primary visual cortex and from there the color blobs in layer number 2 and 3 of primary visual cortex then the signals are sent to secondary visual cortex and then to occipito temporal cortex which is also called as area v8 v8 is concerned with perception of color it is proposed that geniculocalcarine tract has three pathways to transmit color signals first is red green pathway which transmits the difference between l and m type of responses that is the differences between red and the green cone stimulation second is blue yellow pathway and it transmits the difference between the s cones and addition of m and l cone responses the third is luminance pathway that carries some of l and m cone responses to the cortex so these are the three different pathways carrying different signals to the visual cortex also the ganglion cells response to the color is also different the ganglion cells can be on center or off center it can be single opponent or the double opponent for example red on green off or red off green on difference in the ganglion cell transmission to the lateral geniculate body also helps in color signal perception this picture shows various areas in the visual cortex this is v1 which is the primary visual cortex surrounding to it is v2 that is the secondary visual cortex or area 18 and then these are the other areas which are labeled up to v8 and out of this this v8 is concerned with color signal processing now let us study the factors affecting color perception first is it depends on illumination so whether you are seeing color in bright light or dim light in dim light the brightest part of the visual spectrum is green because in dim light rods are active and its sensitivity spectrum is closer to the green spectrum during daylight or bright light brightest part of the spectrum is yellow which is closer to the red spectrum and hence the same color is perceived differently during bright light and dim light the shift in the maximum sensitivity of the eyes to the visual spectrum with respect to changes in the illumination is known as purkinje shift another factor that affects color perception is the background color the same color appears different on different color backgrounds for example here the word text is written in the same color but its appearance varies as per the background as you can note in the second picture the same blue color appears differently against green and the pink background a similar difference is seen in pink color appearance against a red and the gray color background now the question arises what is the need to study all these details does the color perception is so important yes color perception plays important role in our lives it helps to identify objects and even affects mood pilots the persons working in paint and dye industries are required to discriminate colors accurately electrical and electronic engineers also need proper color vision to identify resistances but in this digital era multimeter gives a value of resistances and even a color blind engineer can identify resistance properly a color blind pathologist can miss malaria parasite in a blood smear a color blind person may not appreciate traffic signals properly and hence in many countries color vision is tested before issuing driving license in some countries civil services do not employ color blind persons and thus 
color vision is not only important for professionals but also for the layman so that's all for this session see you in the next part thank you if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video